everyone, welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. We're here today with Simon Roach, fresh from his trip from Cardiff. So we're going to talk about um, the possible games we can have in our playoffs. But first I'm going to ask you a little bit about Cardiff. How, what, how was the trip? Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm uh, fresh from Cardiff yet, anyway. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it was deadly. It was just pretty much, it's as good an away trip as I can remember. Look, it's, so it's uh, obviously going over and getting the result made all the difference. Um, We've had a few high points in this particular campaign. I suppose going away from home, but like the crowd were just phenomenal. Uh, over yeah, it looked, at, it looked at on the telly in fairness. What, what were they like, like in terms of accept, of accepting it? Were they were they sounder? Uh, they were a lot sounder before the game than they were after it. I think uh, that kind of probably knocked the stuff out of them a little bit. Uh, particularly, I suppose the manner of it as well. Like they didn't. I think once they fell behind, I, I just never really thought that they were going to score for all their possession. Yeah. It just didn't seem to be kind of going anywhere. And I think I think I think it was all kind of killed off when, when Joe Allen went off. That had a big impact on them. Ramsey's game seemed to suffer a bit as well, I thought. Yeah. He had to he drop deeper, Ramsey trying to trying to get on the ball from like from deeper. That's not really where he is. It was good to have him not being able to go and join up the attacks. And you've obviously got Joe Allen who keeps them ticking over. Yeah. Um and he was getting in between the lines as well. Yeah. Where Moyla kind of was, but I don't think he was seeing him. He was kind of slipping over his shoulder the other time, but I was kind of happy to see him getting off. Oh, Moyla, Moyla made sure he didn't get back. No, that was it, yeah. No, he caught, he caught him well, but um, that's like that's that's what we needed. And if, in fairness, like I think the, the way the team was actually put out, like he picked a big, strong, muscular team, Martin yeah. O'Neill. Like he, I think he wanted to, to go and be physical with them. Um, you could see there was a you lot of energy. That with with uh, Murphy up front like yeah yeah like that's it like uh, I don't even think like you're always going to get work right from Murphy like he's going to put himself about he's maybe not like technically the greatest but yeah. um, but, like, but I was telling do your job like do you know what I mean yeah that's it I, like I guess just with the, the fact that Shane Long was injured as well like yeah, I think that was, was a bit of a blessing in disguise it could it could have been like it would have been nice I would have still liked to have had him on the line maybe just you know yeah, to, to maybe definitely. stretch their defence a little bit but I yeah. said that in the preview and then I found out he got injured yeah so then we were saying last night that um, which you can check out on our YouTube channel um, I was saying last night that we, we could basically if like Long's not playing or we were hoping that if he was, he would stretch the defence, and then we found out he wasn't playing, so we're saying maybe it was a blessing in disguise, just, just in regards to his form. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, and Murphy's been scoring, in fairness to him, and he got two, obviously, the other night. Yeah, he's been flying, like, Murphy's been flying in the championship uh, this year, so, like, I'm looking like, fair play to me. He actually had a decent finish to the year with uh, Newcastle last yeah. season as well, so, like, fair play, like, he's, he's kind of, he's aging well, in fairness to him. Um, the only thing is, is, like, like, I like, seems to suit him in the championship, yeah, I think so. We think like what is he now? He's probably thirty four. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Like I think that's that's probably if you can get another year or two there, he'll probably yeah. be doing pretty well. Exactly, yeah. yeah, but like the game plan, like yeah. it, it did kind of suit that if you're gonna have like a, he's not the most mobile either. Like he's not light and fast like Shane Long, so like you do have to get your midfield up and support if you're gonna have a big lad like that up there. And he's not gonna be able to probably run the channels that well. Yeah, um, you do have to get the midfielders up up around them, and you know I think possibly like as you said like when Joe Allen went off like we kind of grew into the game a little bit more and I think the really telling part was like the goal if you look at it like obviously Jeff Hendrick did fantastically well like, you could see where the press was but what, what what was probably the best thing about it one of the best things about it was when the ball went in the box we had loads of bodies in there yeah. you know so we actually had committed players forward I think it was very clever very clever yeah I don't know if you saw like there was some uh, some freeze frames where I've he actually he looked over his shoulder that, yeah. so he, could, he knew what was behind him you know so like and it, that run he made across the, the near post like that took a couple of defenders with him you know and, and yeah. created the space but uh, yeah it was fantastic the, the, the overall trip was great there was a serious session in the, t in the town centre as you can imagine unbelievable atmosphere after the game then as well you know back into town yeah it's a bit of a walk back in from the stadium, but play, we were we were in good spirits. Don't as you can imagine. At that point. <laughs> Didn't care. It was into the nearest uh, shop. There was a, a petrol station that just did not know what hit it, but like they were clearing out a beer, I'd say, in five minutes flat. But uh, so we had our slabs of cans. Walk back into town. Brilliant. Happy as Larry. Yeah. As Irish yeah. as it gets. Yeah, yeah. It's the way to do it. Yeah. Everyone got home safe. Yeah. Everyone got home safe. Yeah, I did. Well, I did I probably still hanging, but yeah. Well, that's it. Look, I'm still, I'd say, fifty percent at the moment. You know, yesterday I was probably operating at five percent, ten percent in work. You know. That's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, um, well, I'm glad you had a fantastic trip. Nice and safe. That's all good. Uh, we move on to where, uh, I suppose, what's going to be next month, the telling point whether we get into Russia or not. Now, in your opinion, who would be who would be the team that you'd be most lo likely or most looking to avoid? Um, 
the short answer to that is I think Croatia. Um, I think it's a funny one this one like usually we've got these four teams obviously who we all know um, and traditionally speaking it would always be out of those four you'd look at it and say I want to avoid Italy um, and probably want to avoid Croatia but like they're all having their problems at the moment yeah. we know like this is not a classic Italian team but by yeah, any means they are still fairly defensively solid I mean they've got yeah. Benucci they've got Chiellini they still have some good defence and, and Buffon's obviously still experienced yeah. and they, they're pretty much they, they're settled the defense, at least, you know, yeah. maybe not like the rest of the uh, midfield and attack, but yeah. in terms of they would have played together for years, so they know each other, like obviously very well. They do, yeah. So, look, like, I mean, they're they're, they're probably not going to ship too many goals, but I mean, that's and they do have obviously some good players. Look, let's not set, forget, like they've got Ferrari, they've got Insignia, yeah. they've got they've Phenomenal. got some, yeah, they've got some good lads there. But like by your your standard. Or Italian teams of the past, they're they're not they're not at those levels at all. Oh, no, no, no. Um, so. To answer the question, I'd look at it and I'd say I wouldn't absolutely be I wouldn't be distraught if we got Italy. I wouldn't actually be like as, I wouldn't be as kind of put out by a norm as I normally would be. I think we would potentially struggle against Croatia the way they keep the ball. Yeah. Um, well, even that midfield, you think about it, they have uh, Modric, Rakitic, Perisic, yeah, or Kov- Kovacic, sorry. yeah, and then they have the likes of Mandzukic and stuff like that. I know, as we've seen in the Euros, yeah. So they've got like star turns there, and I think like. Or oh, maybe it is just I'm thinking back to 2012, you know, in the Euro. Yeah. But like they played us off the park, you know. I think the way they they always seem to do well in, in in competitions like that though when they get there, you know. Yeah, well that's that's the thing. Um, like they have a like like they've had a pretty they have a very uh, well established brand of football style of play. Um, like they move it really well, like re- like really quick. Um, support each other well. Like it's a good attacking brand. And I think we struggle against teams that are like really kind of technically proficient, and that's that's how I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd regard them. So Croatia are definitely the ones to avoid for me, anyway. Yeah. Look, when you look at the Serbia game, you yeah. know what I mean. You know, Matic and stuff like that. He he, he dominated the game, and he's a defensive midfielder. So I can only imagine if they had someone yeah. like the Modric. Like he doesn't get into the world eleven for nothing. Do you know what I mean? He's yeah. very underrated. But obviously not by players yeah. to play against them if he gets into these teams all the time. Well, well, that's it. And I'm having still, as I said, I'm probably having like 2012 flashbacks of like us playing like like four in the middle against their five, and we've got Glenn Whelan and Keith Andrews yeah. at that point just not getting anywhere near the ball at all. You know, um, but they're chasing shadows. So we've obviously, I know we're, we're, we've kicked on a little bit, and we do have, you know, the, we probably would match up against them in a in a in a three, uh, three and three in the middle of the park, but. Um, I just I think they probably would have too much of us. Yeah, uh, for me I would I'd probably go the same as it with Croatia. I don't I think with Denmark and uh, Switzerland, it's weird when you look at it that Switzerland are the highest ranked out of all. But yeah, all our fans, kind of anyone I've been talking to, would like to get Switzerland. Yeah, and they have had a fairly like easy enough group. I mean they've won nine um, out of ten games. Uh, I don't think they got beat by Portugal, was it? They were well beaten by Portugal in the last game. Uh, yeah. Like I watched it, they didn't really seem to be at the races um, in comparison. Yeah. Um, Their group was like consisted of Latvia, um, Hungary, yeah. Faroes, and who was the other team? Yeah, how you uh, Faroes, Andor. Andor, right. So, yeah, yeah. you know, I fair enough they beat Portugal. Yeah. But, you know, Portugal aren't that... I know they did win the Euros, um, Euro, obviously. Yeah. They're not that great. Do you know what I mean? They could be well organised, but they, I don't think they're that great, and especially without Ronaldo, they're not that great. Yeah, well, like uh, they're they do have some good players, but I'd be obviously fearing Croatia more. Well, I was I was massively supporting Portugal in that game against Switzerland because uh, you know I, I would have, as you said yourself, I would have been fearing playing Portugal, as in they would have been one of the seeded teams. Yeah, um, course, yeah. Like a like similar to Croatia, I think it'd be kind of hard to break down, but they've got flair players that we don't have. You know, yeah, well, even for for every Ronaldo, there's a there's Nani and then there's. Um, charisma and all these yeah. other, and, and, and they do very well for their country might not do well for their club but they do do very well for their country it's like um, Ashley Williams when he puts on a Wales jersey you know? yeah, yeah, or yeah. Shane Duffy when he puts on an orange yeah for example yeah, Superman. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's it well he had, a, he had a fantastic game the other day yeah. but that was meat and drink to him you know like ball out in front of him they weren't really getting in behind and he was dominating I think yeah. I read some stat that he made something like 19 clearances or something like that which yeah. is like that so if we say a team that plays down ball then I, I wouldn't be as fearful, do you know what I mean? Because it's kind of combating the same thing. Yeah. So, but I don't. Uh, out of all those teams, I don't really. I don't see them playing long ball, especially with Denmark. They've got Eriksson of yeah. Spurs, and you know how he likes to play. He gets it down and sprays it, and yeah. he's just unbelievable with his, like crossing and shooting. I, I I'd be 
wary of uh, committing fouls around him and stuff like that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that they all have like one star player. Do you yeah. know what I mean? We don't really have a star player. We've more of a team. Yeah. Which yeah. I don't know really if uh, which I'd rather like. But Bale had or, Bale, or Wales obviously had Bale. We don't really have a star player. So if we're missing a, a couple of players, like obviously we're missing Coleman. He'd probably be our best player. But yeah. we don't rely on as our you know so to speak star player. Yeah. So. But we had a lot of bodies there for the last game. Like you'd easily forget yeah. Johnny Walters Long, wasn't Walters, there. Yeah. Um, Coleman and uh, McCarthy as well. Yeah, McCarthy. And McCarthy, too. Uh, McCarthy being out now. I say Moyler being out now. It might be if 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 McCarthy can get a couple of games in the next month or so. Yeah. You know, it might not be a bad idea to get him straight as a straight replacement. You know. Yeah. Well, that might be good news that Everton are struggling. Then you know. Yeah. Not for you, but uh, yeah, yeah. But that's it. Now, but like, they, you know, if he can get a bit of fitness together and, and slot him back in, that'd be that'd be ideal. You know. Yeah. Like on on the subject of McCarthy, I suppose, um, and his Everton situation, like. We do. I think it's important that he starts getting games for us. Um, I mean, it's been brilliant that, that how David Moyers performed in the last. Yeah, few, like, yeah. like, but I think he's David Moyers maybe playing above his natural level at the moment. Uh, well, he's, he's, he's he's doing so well at the moment. His confidence is sky high. He's, yeah. he's he's banging away for holes, getting assists. Yeah, and then obviously he's captain and us. Like he's in the form of his life right now. But like he has, he he, he took the sacrifice to get the yellow, which by all means I've now arms with it whatsoever yeah but the thing is Koeman actually likes McCarthy but McCarthy, uh, McCarthy doesn't know Vavis when he goes to play for him and everyone's always going to be what do you think about McCarthy what do you think about Everton? It's, just, it's nothing to do with what, what, what I think I've no control over this whatsoever I, like, I want to play for both teams I would like to see McCarthy starting yeah. for Everton starting for Ireland and playing fit because when he's fit He's he's Everton's best midfielder when he's fit. Yeah, well, I think he covers a lot of ground. Like you know, he's an intelligent player as well. He gets a bit of a raw deal, I think, from a lot of people, a lot particularly Ireland fans. A lot of people haven't seen him. But when we and I and I keep banging the drum with this, is everybody says, "Oh, well, McCarthy." But if you look at our big games, he's always been in the midfield for when yeah. we've got big wins. Yeah, well, I think, and it's just the fact that he he like he can cover more ground in that holding midfield position. And yeah. this is where David Moyler also wins out over Glenn Whelan for me. You know, like yeah. I think Glenn Whelan as good as a servant he's been. He's and he has he's been fantastic. You know, in terms of like he's, he he never cries off. You know, he's he always shows up. He gives it his all. But I, I just and don't comes think to every squad no matter what. Yeah, he just I just don't think he can get around the pitch anymore. You know, like yeah. and it's it's almost like having one person just to cover the the space in front of the two centre backs. I thought that's not enough for a centre midfielder in the modern yeah. game. I think like well, that's what Moyler does, but he goes left and right. Yeah, and can get around too. Well, that was it. Well, it was even we didn't. I think it was against sorry to go off. Yeah, um, no, no. against Austria. Yeah, he was just planted. Yeah, and it's just very you know, it's like you're stuck in the mud almost. Well, and we got caught badly in Georgia, like over in Tbilisi as well, yeah. where you know he just he just wasn't like if his job is to track those runners right and try and like you know protect the space in front of the two centre backs. Like he wasn't even doing that in the Georgia game, you know. Um, and as I said, like totally agreed, he's been a great servant. But I think just at this stage, we need yeah. to be looking at other options, and it'd be great to have. But still keep know. him around the squad for, yeah. for experience. You know, he's played in tournaments now. He's played in two big tournaments. Yeah. So you know, they're the type of players that you want. If if he's if it's coming to a stage where he's not even getting a look in and he's holding back a younger player, then I'd say, all right, come on, yeah, only the time let's to. move him on. But there's no one really. That he's getting in ahead of, do you know what I mean? Well, maybe Hurrahan, you'd argue, but yeah. against Wales, you don't know, he did need experience to come on. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But who's to say Hurrahan or something like that? Because O'Neill does love a wild card. Who's to say Hurrahan or something like that doesn't get a run in the playoff now? Because you never know with him. Yeah. Like Maguire could even get a run or someone like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. As I say, we don't have this, this star player. And that's the funny thing about what Ireland is and our fans. Is that when anyone who's potentially in any way good yeah. is the new Messiah? Like, oh, we you know? love a new Messiah because it's a quick fix. That's what we're looking for, you know. And we that allows us to try and ignore, I suppose, like all the yeah. the problems, like with our structure, you know, and the fact that we don't really or the way that we play isn't yeah. the easiest on the eye we've as well. Not, we've, we've never changed. We haven't changed that much. It's, it's really like I suppose Mick McCarthy was the last really attractive brand of yeah. football that we've played, but like. Football fans are fickle, you know, like, and that's, I suppose the thing about it is, is that, like, if you're playing a fairly horrible brand of football to watch, which a lot of the time we are, that's grand if you're getting results. Yeah. But once the results turn, if it's yeah. a horrible, like, look what happened to Trapattoni as well. Like, I mean, I it all happened to O'Neill, yeah, like, before yeah. the two games. Oh, if, um, if we weren't in the playoffs. A lot, a lot of people were calling us early. And myself included, I was saying, if, if he doesn't, like, qualify, I get, like, okay, I, the playoffs is acceptable in my eyes, yeah. but to, to not get near there, from yeah. where the position we were in, and I understand Coleman got injured, yeah. and a lot of other teams would suffer if their best player 
yeah. didn't get in, didn't get in, you know, or or was injured. Sorry, um, but like it, it makes it makes it obviously that bit, bit more difficult for O'Neill because he can't turn around and go, "Well, my best player is injured," you know. And yeah. a lot of people forget that Coleman because because he's it's an international game. They forget that you know yeah. he's the one missing. Well, he brought a lot like to the game. He's our captain, as you say. He's our best player. He's actually a great attacking outlet as well. Big time, you know? yeah. Um, and he's a lot better defensively than Christie, and he'd be my biggest worry going into playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, against a, a, a quality side, you know. Yeah, like that's it. And although he was good against Wales, I give him that. Well, the funny thing is, like, uh, just the, looking at the way like our best performances have come away from home as well. We really like a lot of the home games. Like, you even pick any of the qualifiers, but the one that we probably actually tried to play a little bit was the one we lost, Serbia. You know, um, yeah. and you, you just wonder, like, when, like when Martin O'Neill actually did pick a team, you know, like to have Wes in it and whatnot, and he kind of did say, like, we're going to go and we're going to try and, and push for the win here at home, take the initiative. You know, we actually got turned over. You know, and on that occasion where where we yeah. haven't in the, in the other games, as bad as we were against uh, Austria at home and against Wales, at, at I thought home we were well. robbed against Austria. Though. Do you think? Yeah, like, I thought we were because of the goal with Duffy and stuff like that. I thought we were robbed. Uh, it's a free kick, though. No, not a free out. Nah, my eyes. No, no, you didn't. Was the, the, the green, <laughs> green tinted glasses? Did you? But um, I, yeah. I thought it was a, a, a valid goal. I mean, he gets up, but he just clatters him as he's like heading it. Do you know what I mean? But his eyes were on the ball. The whole yeah, time. the defender made like made the most of it, and it was the right thing to do from his perspective. But there was just no need to lead with his arm because he would have beaten him in the air anyway. Yeah. You know, yeah. but he was. But I can see obviously the enthusiasm. That's the way he, he's, he's going to go for it. You know, he's yeah. always going to challenge for. The ball that way, but he gave an opportunity for and it was that it was that Turkish referee, wasn't it? The one he, yeah. he always does us, um, just to um, just to give a free out, you know, which was which was a sickener. But we were dreadful up like up what the first sixty minutes of that game, seventy minutes of that game, like yeah. we were we were very very poor against an Austrian team that oh, they're not they're not great jakes, yeah. you know, um, yeah, just, and again they just rely on Alaba. Yeah, well that's it. I just I just think that like because I was I was obviously in the Vienna game as well. Like we're set up better nearly to play away from home where you know you don't really have to dominate possession you can make yourself hard to beat and then just look to hit on the counter and look I'm actually like we don't have to play tiki taka for me like I don't really mind once if you're going to play long once you play the right way the yeah. long ball so you're getting midfielders up in support but exactly like, but he has up there to make it stick and that's why I think having Murphy there it makes sense yeah. he's a big lad long for all he's good, like, good at getting up but who's he flicking around to a lot of the time well that was it like, that was Georgia Georgia away like you're sitting there and we're watching like we had like our midfield uh, sitting right back like a couple of yards outside our box you know had their defenders inside like you know sitting between the, the penalty spot and the edge of the box Shane Long's on his own up top and it was heartbreaking just watching the ball get like you know it's getting launched and you can see it because you're there you're having a look and thinking like when we do because they have they have a good spell of possession good spell of pressure you know camped on the edge of our area completely outplaying us and then we're pinging it and you're like it's just coming straight back like yeah. that we're not going to make that stick there's no chance we're going to make that stick yeah you know so absolutely so um just in terms so you're who, who would be the team that you want to get the most um, or no, well, not that you want to get, but if you it had to be drawn against somebody. Yeah, um, it's like it's it's a tough show, but I, I, I would lean towards um Switzerland for me. Like it's, it's Switzerland or Denmark, um, yeah. more likely. As I, I, mean, I mean, if we're gonna talk about beating teams that we may be able to, maybe, and I always say this, we did beat a Bosnia uh, team who had Ed and Jekyll, yeah, Mo Besic and uh, Ke- Jan Kjanic. Kjanic. yeah. So I mean, and they are very good players, and uh, Begovic plays and goals from too, yeah. So you know, we are capable of getting a, a, a big result, I and mean, we didn't. We probably could have beaten Sweden as well. That Jeff Henrik shot goes in, isn't it? Bad, you know what I mean? Well, well, well that's the thing. Um, and they had Zlatan playing that too. Well, like, it, like in a kind of like a two-legged sort of cup type affair, you you wouldn't you wouldn't really say it, would you? Like yeah. you know, especially if you can keep it tight away from home. Because the first leg is away from home, isn't it? Um, we don't know yet, but like we, there's a rugby match on in Lansdowne. Uh, I'm not a rugby man, so I can't remember who we're playing. Um, but uh, there is <laughs> it's which is on the Saturday, right beforehand. Um, so the likelihood is like because it isn't set who's playing home for first or who's playing away. Like we can once FIFA are okay with it. Um, are UEFA are, are okay with it? Like we can get the I think the away game is more likely to be on the weekend and the home game is more likely to be on the Tuesday, say. To give yeah, to but give I think we play better on a midweek evening game. Yeah, well, yeah, look, I mean... I just think, well, I think the atmosphere is better, everyone gets behind the team, whereas on the weekend, just the games we've been at, I just don't, I just don't feel that same atmosphere, which is weird because you think people will be off work more. 
Yeah. Well, there is, I suppose, like, just even with the locality of, like, where yeah, lands the lights and stuff. The Aviv. Well, yeah, that, that could be it, you know, but I think, it, it, like, it's an occasion where people kind of get out of work, they get to the boozer, have a few points, you know, get the spirits up, and then head to the game for, you know, like, quarter to eight or whatever it is. And, um, you know, I suppose it probably has helped a little bit that they're serving gargle in um, in Lansdowne now yeah. as well. You know, in around the singing section and, what, and whatnot, it probably doesn't do any harm getting yeah. people. I'm in the premium level, so half time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got the flash seats, have you? Yeah, oh, a little nice. bit of leather there. Wouldn't dirty yourself down with the yeah. uh, the common folk. No, no, no. no. Shout out to the Ballybrack Seagulls. They looked after me. Oh, very good, very good. Yeah, very Wayne, good. top man. <laughs> uh, for me, I would probably say Switzerland as well. I just. I just don't see him having that like kind of star player who's gonna who's gonna you know, I suppose just execute all our flaws, which I see Ericsson do. Yeah. If Joe Allen can do it, Ericsson's gonna make a meal of us. Um, obviously, Modric and then yeah, Italy. Yeah. Again, they're, they're a bit like us. They have a, they have a good team. Yeah. No real star players anymore. Good yeah. team, uh, and they do have. But like Shakiri up front, like Shakiri's all right, but he's yeah. he's not. An absolute world beater, you know. Like he's, uh, yeah. he hasn't set the world totally on fire at Stoke. No, he's a good player. Plays for Stoke. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We've got players who yeah. kind of play, you know, that sort <laughs> of level as well. Yeah, yeah he used to. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. They're teammates. I'm sure uh, Walters <laughs> will be given a few. You know, oh, this is how you break them up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they, they, and like Lick Steiner is there, isn't he? Yes, he is. Yeah, yeah from from you. And then Bolo. Yeah. Um, who who was playing with ba- uh, Basel? I think he went to the German league. I'm not sure. I think he played for Schalke or something like that. Yeah. Or maybe it's Munching Mont- 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 I'm not too sure. Yeah. But you wouldn't be terrified of them. Yeah, basically. Yeah. I mean, we still uh, people forget that we still have players like Brady and stuff like that. You did have a bit of an off game against uh, Wales, but he, uh, usually in big games you can turn it on, so I wouldn't rule it out. Um, anyway, guys, don't forget to let us know what you guys think in the comments. Simon, thanks very much for coming on. Thanks been for having pleasure. me. Fair play, thank you. And uh, yeah, we'll probably see you in uh, the away leg, whether it be in uh, Zurich or yeah. Zagreb. That's it, yeah. We'll see. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV.